Good morning, friends, and welcome as we continue our extended chapel schedule for the month of May. We are grateful to offer to our community these additional virtual chapels during this pandemic. So let's continue to pray, be vigilant, and get vaccinated to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and our neighbors. We are honored and delighted to have the honorable. Reverend Dr. Wilson Good in chapel with us today. Thank you for being here, Dr. Good. Next week, we'll have on May 19th, Dr. Debbie Watson from Palmer Seminary. Following that and the final Wednesday in May, May 26th, Professor Teresa Moyer, who is retiring from Eastern University after 30 years of faithful service. Many thanks as always to the extended chapel tech team who helps with the logistics of the technology each week, Sue, Taylor, Heather, and Rebecca, and to Nancy Hartsock, our faithful prayer email coordinator. We do appreciate that ongoing ministry that Nancy has even in retirement, she is serving our community. And a special acknowledgement to all those who served in various capacities during this week's commencements at the Mann Center of the Performing Arts, the faculty and staff who served so well and so diligently. Kudos to Heather Norsini from our president's office and Amy Schreiber for our provost's office for all their good efforts. And they were just in motion for all those days and all those commencements. Also, congratulations to Heather on her daughter Emily's graduation from the university this week too. That was wonderful. And uh, it, I would be remiss not to offer, extend special thanks to Megan Capers, Director of Conferences and Special Events and her stellar team of Sean McDonald, Ephraim Harkins and their student workers and all those involved with conferences for an outstanding job. And also to President Matthews, who is this year a nominee for the Lug Eric Iron Horse Award for handing out hundreds of diploma cases to graduates during our four commencements this week. As you recall, Lou Gehrig was the durable first baseman for the Yankees for many years. And, and friends, President Matthews was still standing at the end of our last fourth commencement in just two days at 5.30 p.m. yesterday. So I think he'll get the award, the Lou Gehrig Iron Horse Award. But seriously, friends, as I pray, let us begin to prepare ourselves for a time of worship in music and in hearing the word this morning. Let's, let's pray together. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, this morning to accept your word. Silence in us any voices but your own, so that we may hear your word and also do it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning, we are beneficiaries of two of our music faculty, Dr. Carla Scott, a vocalist, and Professor Anthony Walker, a pianist, who will be leading us in worship this morning. Let us join in in worship this morning. He stands 
and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God had three and one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb. Still to 
against the Lord. No one can, no one will. Who will stand against the King? No one can, no one will. Oh, oh, victory to Jesus, victory belongs to him, oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus, victory belongs to him, who can stand against the Lord, no one can.
Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. President Matthews, I think um, you are on mute. Thank you. You know, I was so uh, grateful that I've gotten through most of my meetings the past year without having to have that said to me. So I guess before honor comes humility. <laughs> Thank you. Let me try it again. I first of all wanted to express gratitude to Dr. Carlos Scott and Professor Anthony Walker, such beautiful music and such wonderful leading in worship and praise. Also, it is my pleasure to introduce the Reverend Dr. W. Wilson Good Sr. Dr. Good is president and CEO of Amachi Incorporated, a nationally acclaimed faith-based program for mentoring children of incarcerated parents. He is the chairman and CEO of Self Incorporated, a nonprofit corporation dedicated to serving more than 600 homeless men and women. Dr. Good is a senior fellow at the Fox uh, Leadership School at the University of Pennsylvania. He became Philadelphia's first African-American mayor in 1984 and served two terms. Because of his innovative and groundbreaking work, he received two prestigious awards in 2006, the Civic Ventures Purpose Prize and the Philadelphia Inquirer's Citizen of the Year Award. Dr. Good was ordained as a Baptist minister in 1999 and has served more than 64 years at the First Baptist Church of Pasco, located in Southwest Philadelphia. Dr. Good has also served as an officer in the United States Army. He led pioneering work in faith-based housing assisting churches in building more than 2,000 units for low and moderate income persons. Dr. Good was the first African-American member and chairman of the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission. He broke racial barriers again with his appointment as managing director for the city of Philadelphia. He subsequently spent seven years as deputy assistant secretary of education in the Clinton administration. He left that position in 2000 to organize the Amachi program, which has now served more than 300,000 children in 50 states. Currently, Dr. Good is chairman of the Philadelphia Leadership Foundation. He is a board member and former chairman of Big Brothers Big Sisters Independence Region and the Free Library of Philadelphia. He is a board member of America's Promise Alliance, Community in Schools of Philadelphia, and Eastern University. Dr. Good is Chairman Emeritus of Leadership Foundations and Trustee Emeritus of Southwest Leadership Academy Charter School. He is the former Chair of Partners of Sacred Places and the Cornerstone Christian Academy. Dr. Good earned his Bachelor of Arts from Morgan State University, a Master of Arts from the University of Pennsylvania, and a Doctor of Ministry from Palmer Theological Seminary of Eastern University. He is the recipient of 15 honorary doctorates. Dr. Good is a member of Sigma Pi Phi and Kappa Alpha Psi fraternities. He also served as Eastern's May 2019 commencement speaker. On a personal note, right after the Board of Trustees called me to serve as president, Dr. Good stood up and brought all the members around me to lay hands and pray over me. It was a moment I will never forget. Dr. Good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining our Eastern University and our community again today. We look forward to hearing from you. May God bless you. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Good. Yes, Dr. Matthew, thank you so much. Uh, I greet all of you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
and said that he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Uh, I want to um, read a scripture this morning from Psalms 118. In my anguish, I cried to the Lord and he answered by setting me free. The Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? I want to talk uh, with a tag that says, when trouble comes, he keeps on blessing. Don't worry about a thing. Uh, in this period of pandemic, of COVID-19, there's probably no other period in our recent history where the anxiety index is as high as it is now. No other period in our recent history have Americans felt so unsure of themselves. No other period in recent history have Americans been so unsure of the future. The uncertainty is on every front, politically, economically, personally, and may I suggest spiritually. There are some who cannot sleep, some who will not leave their homes, some who will not fly or drive or ride a bus or a train. There is even uncertainty among men and women of God. There are those who believe in God, but don't trust God. There are those who believe in God, but don't have faith in God. And there are those who believe in God, but have turned to their own instincts for survival. There are even some who may be on this call this morning who may fit one of these categories, not passing judgment. I'm not sure why the psalmist wrote Psalm 118. The psalm is a litany of thanksgiving. Martin Luther spoke of this psalm and said, this is a psalm that I love. It has helped me out of grave troubles. The psalmist speak, I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. I will not fear. I will not fear. What can man do to me? These are powerful words of God for an extraordinary time. There is assurance here that we can't find anywhere else. There's confidence here that is absent from other situation. I call upon the Lord and he answered me. David knew something about the Lord's answering. When Goliath stood in front of him, the Lord answered. When Saul and Absalom tried to overthrow him, the Lord answered. Not only that, but David could say with confidence that the Lord is on my side. I'm challenged to make three quick points here this morning. First is trouble will surely come. Second, his grace and mercy is sufficient to undergird us. And third is remember it's God's world and he has a plan for it. As we look back over our lives, or as I look back over my life, especially, Trouble has always been around. We get a promotion and a car breaks down. We get a bonus and, and suddenly someone gets sick. We celebrate joys and sadness often at the same time. When things are going really well, we expect trouble to come. Christ knew that there would be days like the pandemic when anxiety un and uncertainty would take hold of us. You see, we become anxious in difficult times. Anxiety causes us to take our present hardship and anticipate even greater calamities. 
uh, and there is anxiety in good times because some folks fear that there will be a reversal of their good fortunes. But anxiety separates us from God. Anxiety separates us from God because you trust yourself and not God. Anxiety dishonors God. Anxiety also defies logic. Hasn't God been there for you in the past? Didn't he feed those who were hungry and clothe those who were naked, visit those who were in jail and in the hospital room? Someone said that he's a mind fixer and a heart regulator. That's an old Baptist down home saying. He takes care of the birds and the foliage and all the creatures, large and small. Does he not protect them? And if God protects them, won't God also protect us? For some of us, it's just plain fear. The psalmist says, I will not fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear makes us focus on our failures and not our possibilities. Fear makes us focus on our failures and not our possibilities. Fear will cause us to feel trapped when we serve a God who will make a way out of no way. Fear will have you looking at your circumstance instead of looking at God. Fear will cause you to focus on the bad when good is all around. Fear suffocates faith. Fear removes all trust. Fear banishes all belief. Fear hinders all hope. Moses in Exodus 14, 13 said to the people of Israel, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. Let's examine for a little while here what the psalmist is really saying to us this morning. He said, his grace and mercy undergirds us. Been in the storm too long, but glory, hallelujah, the storm is passing over. I'm troubled on every side, but so glad that trouble don't last always. The psalmist is really saying that when trouble comes, to call upon the Lord. When trouble comes, to call upon the Lord. He did not say call upon the president and I like Joe Biden. He did not say call upon the governor and I like Governor Wolf. He did not say call upon the mayor and I like Mayor Kenny, or uh, even the pastor and I like my pastor. The word says that when trouble comes to call upon the Lord. Well, the psalmist says that when I was in distress, I call upon the Lord. And, when, and then the psalmist quickly adds, and he answered me. I like that, he answered me. Well, the lion wasn't busy. He wasn't busy helping someone else. He answered me, not only did he answer me, but also he set me in a large place. Well, theologians interpret large plays differently at times. I think he meant, I think what he meant was that not only did he answer me, but he expanded my request and what I asked for. Not only did he come to see about me, he comforted me. Like Jabaz said, he expanded my territory. He gave me all I needed and then more. He took care of me. Not only that I know from what he has done for me that the Lord is always on my side. Just a personal note, there's no way that I could go from a sharecropping farm in Seaboard, North Carolina and end up where I am today without the Lord being on my side and he is on my side, I shall not fear. If he who is all powerful, God, all knowing God is everywhere at the same time, 
that he is on my side. Why should I fear man? Low, old, puny man. Why should I worry about the technology hacking and biological chemical warfare and the unknown evil that man may seek to put upon me? I will not fear because the Lord is on my side. Listen to his words. Psalms 91 7 says, A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Psalm 27 said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me, to devour my flesh, when my enemies me and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. I've lived long enough to watch my enemies stumble and fall in trying to do evil things against me. Psalm 37, 39, the salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. Let me repeat that. The salvation of the righteous, righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. Psalm 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. I like that. Ever-present help in trouble. That means he's 24-7. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the depth of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, I will not fear because the Lord is on my side. Finally, we seem to forget something that this is God's world and he has a plan for it. There are 31,174 verses in the Bible and right in the middle, verse 15,587, it says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord and to put confidence in man. I do not mean to discount what is going on, the pandemic. We're living in extraordinary times by human standards, but the human mind responds the only way it knows how to respond. But we are not in this by ourselves. We're not alone. There's one who comes to us while we are alone in the garden, while the dew is still on the roses. He is the one who tells us that we belong to him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And when we do everything we can do, when we put forth our best effort, when we've gone as far as we can go, he makes up difference. Friends, he makes up the difference all the time if we just trust him. After all, he is the same God who removed our stumbling blocks. He's the same God who made our mountains low and our valleys high. He's the same God who straightened out crooked places and smoothed out rough places. He's the same God who made a way out of no way. He's the same God who brought peace out of confusion in our lives. Thank you, Lord. So why should we trust Jesus and not man? There are three reasons I would like to just share with you. First, there is the sameness of Jesus. The sameness of Jesus. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And there are no mood shifts. There are no periods of anger because he could not have his way. He does not run hot and cold 
His mercy is everlasting and his grace is sufficient. His yoke is always easy. His burdens are always light. Jesus is the same. I can go to him at any time. There is the sameness of Jesus. Uh, every day with him is sunny and bright. He is always the same. He is justice, equality, peace, and fairness all wrapped up in one package. He's always the same. There is the completeness of Jesus. He's everything we need. He's omnipotent. He knows everything. He knows everything. He knows what you're going to do before you do it. And know and even thought about what you were going to do. He is uh, always present, always there for us. He's everywhere, all at the one time. He knows your entire DNA. That's kind of frightening at times. He knows our entire DNA. He's complete. He is the beginning and the end. He's before and after. He reaches from everlasting to everlasting. Jesus is all the world to me. There is completeness in Jesus. And this is a word I think I made up. There is the onlyness of Jesus. O-N-L-Y-N-E-S-S. -S. Oh, there's no one else like him. No other was born to a virgin, died on the cross, was buried, and after three days got up from the grave with all power in his hand. There is the onlyness of Jesus. Oh, he is like, he's not like any other person. He is more than, more than anything we have seen and will see. He's more than eyes can see. He's more than hands can feel. He's more than the mouth can speak. Listen to him speak in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, shall have eternal life. And I know that there are things that we don't understand. I know that fear will often overtake our faith. And I know that anxiety will smother trust at times. And I know that confusion will overthrow our confidence, but I believe that we will understand it better by and by. I understand it by and by. I believe that we will understand it by and by. Uh, I know that sometimes that we feel as if it cannot get worse with so many people dying around the country and around the world and even in our own family. We, don't know what to do next. Trust God. And by and by, when the world we know will fade into the sea of forgetfulness, on that day, I want to thank him for the care he took of me. I want to thank him for the care he took of me. Thank him for loving me, even when I did not love myself. I want to thank him for every fear, every anxiety, every attack, every sorrow, and every valley I went through. I want to thank him for every sickness, every tear, and every enemy. I want to thank him for his plan for salvation. Thank him for taking care of me and bringing me thus this far. Praise God, hallelujah to his name. He's wonderful to be praised. May God bless all of you. Hallelujah indeed. Thank you, Mayor Good, for your faith, your endurance, your rich and long-term service to the Church of Jesus Christ, your service to Philadelphia and to our nation, for your leadership in nonprofits, and for your faithful service and influence as a trustee of Eastern University. 
We are so blessed to have had you share with us today. Thank you for preaching and for breaking open the word of God. As is our privilege and ritual, we will open the chat room to share our praises, encouragements, and prayer requests. Let us remember and encourage ourselves that God is here and invites us to come together through prayer. Let's take a few minutes to pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. May, may I just say something, uh, Dr. Matthew, please? Uh, and that is, uh, two weeks ago, I was coming home from the post office at, at my street at um, 59th and City Avenue, and my car I was in was hit by a school bus and total. And I was able to walk away uh, without any injuries. So I just want to ask all of you to keep me in prayer <clears throat> and thank God for saving me and, and, and giving me some more years here because I could have gone far different than what way it went. 
uh, and he was going at a high rate of speed at the same time. Uh, wow. Thank you for letting us know that and praise <coughs> Bob for sparing you and sparing us candidly. We're so grateful that uh, the Lord has uh, given you more years and um, for the richness of your faith. Uh, thank you for your preaching again. And I'm going to ask that all of us receive the benediction, which comes from Ephesians <coughs> chapter, chapter four. Now by grace, let us lead a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as we were called to the one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Let us go out in faith, courage, praise, and joy. We are dismissed. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much.